and that's something that I would really like to change um, by creating this book. Um, so I suppose that brings me on to what the book is actually about. And to give you a good idea, I'm going to give you a quick reading of a couple of pieces. <clears throat> I've given this book a lot of thought as to what I would like it to mean. Well, it's an insight into illness, specifically into ulcerative colitis. I think the biggest thing I would like this book to achieve is an increased awareness of this disease. It's surprisingly well known, but it doesn't get the recognition it deserves when it comes to funding or benefits. It's thought of as a toilet disease, rather than a disease which can and does kill. For every year, this disease was a persisting nuisance that caused occasional embarrassment, slight acid, and frustration that wasn't improving. However, not overnight, but pretty suddenly, it became the be all and end all of my life. I dropped out of uni, I stopped playing sport, and I became unable to leave the house, and most days unable to leave bed. And that's quite heavy, and I apologise for that, I don't want to put you on reading it because that was just an inevitable aspect of writing a book like this. But um, as Mr. Evans said, I think I tried my best to keep it upbeat in my heart and proud. So um, I'll read you another little, another little excerpt. Luckily for me, I'm actually a pretty laid back person. I'm also pretty open. As I said at the start of the book, the toilet is not a great talking point. Before my diagnosis, I had six months of extreme embarrassment. There was no label for what I was going through. I was just shitting a lot, which is difficult to explain to your mates in a serious context. In essence, there's not a huge difference between this and any other body malfunction. For example, hay fever is a condition where you use a whole mess of stuff for a hole in your face. Well, in a nutshell, that's what happens to me. But through a hole in my ass. <coughs> now, hosting an event like this, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, that cold will be. Hosting an event like this would have been impossible for me a couple of years ago. Um, you know, I really didn't realise or had no concept of the psychological impact the disease can have on your life. And even in preparation for this speech and this event, my main concern wasn't the delivery of the speech, it's actually whether or not I would have to excuse myself to go to the toilet after we through. Um, so if I do, just bear with me. Um, the psychological aspect actually became just as devastating as any other part, any other physical um, difficulties that I met with this condition. Um, reached the point where I had to hire a hypnotherapist to try and help me get through these issues. And um, I talk about that here in the book. One of the first things that my hypnotherapist asked me to do in my first session was to picture myself in a place of comfort, a place where I feel perfectly relaxed. This was of course going to be my happy place, somewhere like a beach or a meadow where the sort of suggestions he was looking for. But mine was a little different. At this point in my life, my happy place was the toilet. No joke, that's what I told him. And he quite rightly said to me that this wouldn't really do the trick, considering why he was coming to see me. So eventually I settled on the green in my village, but my overriding thought throughout my first experience of hypnosis was just what a long way from the toilet my happiness was. Now, um, in the book I try and keep my personal thank yous down to a minimum. Um, but I think I would be very foolish to have an opportunity like this and not take advantage by thanking some very special people. Uh, obviously, my parents, uh, as I'm here tonight, my mum and dad. Um, the love and support has been a constant throughout my entire life, and I don't know where I'd be without them. I certainly wouldn't be the person I am today or in the position I am today without both of them. And this whole experience of illness, I think, in many ways, has been a lot harder on them than it has been on me. And they've never let that be shown or let it affect them outwardly towards me, and it's made it much easier process of a good bit. Uh, and the other person I'd like to thank, it, to thank is uh, my best friend Tom Brewer, who's also here tonight. Um, he actually took the day of work to help me set up today, he's done a lot of work in preparation for this. Uh, and that's just a small indicator of how much help he's given me throughout the years. Um, he was with me for my first really challenging experience with colitis when we travelled around Europe together. And I couldn't have considered doing that with anyone else apart from Tom. He made the trip not just manageable but really very enjoyable and a life changing experience and I couldn't have done it without And I'd just like to say you've been everything that a best friend should be and then some. So thank you. Um, none of you have glasses left. Uh, I was going to 
<laughs> ask you to raise them for a toast to these three amazing people. Um, I'll end the speech with one last passage from the book. <clears throat> I suppose the real message here is not about politeness at all, but really what I mentioned at the start of the book. Most burdens are often worse to bear than they would appear on the surface. But on the same token, just because someone has a lifelong illness doesn't mean they need to be treated any differently, for the most part. I don't need sympathy for my illness. In fact, I found a far more constructive manner than that of banter. I have no qualms about my friends taking the piss. After all, it's an embarrassing illness, but that doesn't mean I have to be embarrassed about it.